Hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to show you my very first actual proper ship review with the Russian premium destroyer the PR7U Stroini. Obviously I will have a direct comparison uh, with a stat card in, the, uh, in a direct comparison to the German Z20 and the American Cowell destroyer. However, I think overall the format might change in the future, whatever there more comes, because currently the stat cards are not really um, complete, subject to changes to everything because it is a close beta still. But in the first, you know, at the first look, you might have a competitive destroyer. When you actually play it, you will soon realize that the PR7U is not very good in a direct firefight and uh, has no real special flavor unlike the uh, German Z20 or the American Cowell destroyer because while the latter two are trading punches with each other uh, one being better than the other in some respect and the other way around this one kind of sniffs glue in the corner in direct comparison. Now I'm not saying it's overall pathetic, bad and worthless, but you constantly feel outperformed and outgunned and the meta that we currently have in the close beta on those small maps, it doesn't really feel, um, you know, going well for this ship. So I want to talk about the armor, the x-ray, so the interior and then later on uh, you know break down the stats and while I do that I will show you some gameplay so it's a diet version of a tank review because things will not take that long so let's begin now first of all the armor as we can see just some armor plating around the uh, turrets uh, strongest point being 15 millimeters that's not a lot and um, that's about it with the armor so compare it with the armor discussion on the Mars that will take a bit longer x-ray we have four turrets, two in the back, two in the rear, both super firing. Then the machinery in the middle is a big target. And then we have some secondaries, you know, uh, three secondaries, 76 millimeter rapid firing, 35, uh, 34K mountings. And um, the Amorex in the rear, well, it's halfway submerged, not that easy to hit, much like on the Z20 or the Cowell, but the frontal ammo rack sticks out quite substantially and you very often get ammo rack. So that's it already in a few seconds with the armor and the x-ray. Let's move on to some statistics and to some gameplay. Now here with the color code and the direct comparison, it is a lot of red, which is appropriate for a Soviet vessel, I guess, but not in this um, comparison you just don't want to have a lot of red um, so while you have the biggest guns by a few millimeters you have a substantial amount less of them four compared to five 130 millimeter b13 you still have 600 rounds much like the z20 but you know it is enough for a normal battle because you massively lack the dpm and the effective dpm how do i calculate it well um, rounds per minute per gun times the amount of gun that you can bring to bear on a simple broadside or the most effective broadside and we have 40 rounds per minute with the PR7U while both the Z20 and the user's Cowell nearly double that and this is very very decisive when both destroyers come around the corner when both have to range find and that is already uh, also enhanced by the shells not doing as much damage not having an advantage in mass velocity or um, accuracy and also the turret rotation speed is so so slow so if, even if you think that you have a drop it with the Z20 compared to the Cowell the PR7U it's just so slow it feels like a cruiser gun the same is with the torpedoes, but here it's a bit more like a trade-off because you just have 6 compared to 8 and 10 for the Z20 and users Cowell respectively and your range is 10 kilometers less than both the torpedoes on the Z20 and users Cowell so no retaliation torpedoes at long range or aerial denial torpedoes into the um, capture zone um, while you have the fastest torpedoes now it comes to the torpedo mod modification that all the destroyers field. 
um, as a tier 4 upgrade and if you uninstall it on the German uh, Z20 for instance you realize that suddenly your torpedoes on the Z20 are as fast but have a 6 kilometer range so if you do the same thing now on the uh, PR7U Stroini you don't have that much better torpedoes to be honest while they have now 8 kilometers range they are now significantly slower with just 64 kilometers so even if you make the most out of it with the trade-offs you don't get up to the very same performance uh, you're always lacking a bit and um, that is a bit problem in my opinion so you don't have the torpedo um, salvo amount um, you don't have this well you have the speed but not the actual practical use six seven eight kilometers that would be useful and um, while you also have the least amount displacement which is kind of negative if you are flooding uh, with the same sized holes um, overall your top speed is still respectable 67 kilometers an hour right in between the both other destroyers and you also have a comparable amount of crew to the user's cowl so again in a direct comparison the destroyer just lacks the dpm it lacks the alpha strike um and also it lacks the survivability with the raised frontal amorac uh, so many things that are in this ship's um you know disfavor let's put it that way let's have a look at the ammunition though we have three different shell types and the of 46 is your normal he shell it has obviously a caliber of 130 millimeters and the 33 kilogram heavy warhead travels with an initial mass velocity of 870 meters. Furthermore, 3.58 kilograms of uh, TNT filling should do a lot of damage with an overall penetration of 36 millimeters. So again, the caliber advantage of a few millimeters doesn't give you a, ex, um, a real advantage in the comparison to the other ones, leading also to the DPM and the Alpha Strike both not being very impressive. And it also just feels like there is no sensitivity given, no fuse delay, so I don't know how it really performs, but compared to the other shell types, it just doesn't deal damage. So this is really, really frustrating, as I found out in numer numerous gameplays. So let's move on to then the second stock shell type. And it is the PB-46A APCVC round. And um, again, very respectable mass velocity of 870 meters, 2.35 kilograms of TNT filling, not too far off from the high explosive shell, 1.2 meters fuse delay and 15 millimeters of fuse sensitivity. So there we have more statistics, 213 millimeters of penetration, significantly less than the Z20, but significantly more than the semi-armor piercing on the cow well um, and it retains the penetration reasonably well but overall it doesn't do too much effective damage and it also doesn't have the alpha strike um, that it would need to be comparable so this is the most used shell type that i would use because the high explosive is that underwhelming and the third special shell type that every destroyer so far fields is the ZS-47P high explosive distance fuse self-destroying. So it's like a flux shell. Um, again, 850 meters per second, 2.12 kilograms of TNT filling, 26 millimeters of high explosive penetration. I never used it. It makes no sense. It's not like the radio fuse on the um, Fletcher class. It's also not the extra damaging or extra effective base fuse shell on the z20 it's just a shell that i personally mm, there is no real place for it at the moment maybe later in in fleet screening um duties against planes where you are dedicated in an anti-aircraft role you might use it but again you don't have the dpm you don't have as many shells in there and you have manually adjust them so you can see so many drawbacks, no special flavor, no special advantage. Um, again, the only exception being the secondaries of the three 76 millimeter guns with the two second reload. But as you can see, the gun handling is awful. The ammunition is not very effective. Um, yeah, that's the problem that I have with this destroyer.
Now let's quickly talk about this gameplay that you can see in the background. You might have seen it, I was experimenting, switching between the ammunition types and it just doesn't do this splash damage. It just doesn't do the damage of other, you know, 5 inch like calibers. Uh, and this is really disappointing, disturbing, because a high explosive shell should do massive damage once it gets into contact with the side of an enemy destroyer or patrol boat. And very often the compartments of a patrol boat don't even get blackened out, but just red and there is still crew in there ready to fight on after the shell has evidently exploded. And um, this is just something that is really, really annoying with this destroyer. Overall, the Destroyer gave me the feeling of it being an RNG fest, being unreliable, not really fun and also not that competitive. Now, it's all not doom and gloom. Of course, you can apply make it work under certain circumstances. If your team helps you, if uh, the um, enemy ships are distracted by firing at somebody else, making you a support ship. But I thought that this ship might have a special trait in a supporting role, long range fire against cruisers. But even that, again, aside from the DPM disadvantage, which is significant, you also don't have the penetration power, you don't have the long range capabilities, which are special enough to, yeah, do anything in particularly good. And so very often I found that the secondaries are in certain uh, situations much better at dealing continuous damage to enemy destroyers the secondaries compared to the much bigger main battery guns and that is just um not good so now i want to show you some special scenes and one of the scenes is here the fight against another pr7u so the same ship against the same ship and now it depends on who finds the range first. Now I try to fight here this enemy by trying to blow up his ammo rack. I'm shooting constantly too high, so short shooting. This looks good and there we go. The shell actually hit the top of the ammo rack, of the frontal ammo rack, which is one of the big weaknesses of this ship. So I now try to turn away from this other destroyer and you see how long it took for the turrets to rotate just for those few degrees. Yes, I turned away, but still in direct contrast, it's just way too long. And while now I do kind of a lot of damage trying to use here the disadvantage of the cowl that it actually has armor, um, hopefully enough armor to activate here the fuses on the um, on the armor piercing and you can see I get a good amount of hits in but this S100 sneaked up uh, because it took me too long to deal here with the destroyers um, and I actually toggled my gunners wrong and I get taken out. So now if you follow the strategy of um, trying to blow up Amorex always be sure that you have sacrificed enough political dissidents to Stalin and um, so that you don't get a unlucky RNG roll. Here you can see uh, he blew me up after I blackened his ammo rack that didn't even explode. So that was kind of a bummer. So while I ranted now a lot about this ship, there are also really awesome scenes that you can do with them. For instance, now I want to show you a quick compilation of some epic one shots. First salvo out, actually a range finding shot and we have the luck of RNG. Oh, that was nasty that we actually blow up the rear ammo rack of this type 1924 and then we come around the corner and there is um, in the patrol boat area here the sub destroyer class frigates um, with two 57 millimeter auto cannons if I'm not wrong and now this salvo actually breaks him he could actually easily destroy him and you could see how the ship was actually leaning to one side same scene here it's continuing a fletcher there we aim for the amrak and we hit it and we blow it up double kill another salvo going out here on this opponent and the shells go down plunging fire into the rear amrak nice another fletcher kill but we have more of those and this time it's um bit funny because it's actually the not so awesome high explosive shell that gets me the kill here again on this type 1939 design with actually a center hit I haven't really observed it but now 
it's also always where the shell just doesn't seem to arm. In this example, you can see how awesome the kill cam looks. It's an LCS, a Seal Clover's favorite. Shots go over the island, hit him on the top of the roof, and we splash all the crew dead. So that was deeply, deeply satisfying. And now I have this battle for you, which was the most successful ones in terms of kills. Um, again, I want to show you what the vessel can do under the very best of circumstances. And we'll see how it does against the patrol boats. Patrol boats usually move relatively fast. They are small targets and you have to really hit them in the right spots to actually knock them out with the right ammunition type. My ammunition type of choice here is armor piercing because if you hit the bow you go mostly through the entire length of the ship. In this case you could see the shells didn't really reach the end of the ship but that was mostly down to it being angled and so the exit of the patrol uh, of the armor piercing shot was in the middle of the ship on the other side but another armor piercing shot now blackens the rear end of this um, PT boat and actually gives me the kill. I already see the torpedoes in the water, so this is why I move the way that I am, not at all, and so I actually will avoid them. And then we have this scene here against this patrol boat. I shoot short um, and we hit the rear. Now we actually hit the, the bridge. And you could see with another destroyer we would already have multiple salvos more out, probably with more guns. And um, now I try to shoot into the smoke, bit of blind shooting, blind guessing, there is still the grey box, let's put it that way, then the grey box disappears, fire, how typical is that? <laughs> so, so now we actually go and help our patrol boats. Again, I'm not the world's biggest fan of this being possible. So there were numerous um, suggestions, you know, more shallow water, just um, hidden minefields, something like this. But uh, Gaijin doesn't really feel like it being necessary in a close beta, so we have to deal with it, I guess. And now you can see, you really also have to hit the rear section of this patrol boat to actually knock it out. So there is no hull break mechanic now in the game. Now we aim for it. We hit it with one shell and that's good enough. Another customer is there. It is the premium one with the rockets and we blow it up. Good stuff right there, double kill. So I think that looks awesome and it kind of is, but the enemies were preoccupied. They were not charging directly towards me and shooting torpedoes at me. And um, I think you have to put it into perspective. Also, I'm helping here my patrol boats and there is currently not a enemy destroyer that challenges me. Now there is another Soviet ship. It is again a sister ship of mine, PR-7U. And you can see he's leaning heavily in the water. He's flooding really hard, 63% buoyancy, or buoyancy, however you pronounce it. And I just want to kill him. I actually hit here again the Amorak, it didn't blow up again, but now it does actually by a compartment kill, which is strange, but I guess it's okay. Now at shorter ranges in those islands versus, versus patrol boats, the torpedoes are, thanks to their higher speed, in the stock fully upgraded configuration, which is a weird term to use, um, they are actually better because you don't have those long range torpedo arrow denial salvos that you usually would do in a direct destroyer versus destroyer engagements. Again, now here it becomes very, very painfully obvious how slow the turret rotation is and if not by um, default, I would have had a hard time. Now you, I saw him launching the torpedoes and now I kill him. So it just had this one launch and I actually turned into him to slow down to shorten the, uh, the distance. Now this LS actually charges me. I can see that I cannot avoid the torpedoes. I want to take them to the tip of the bow and they do minimal damage. Just one gun turret knocked out and just a little fire with actually no flooding. I think Gaijin has to tweak here the damage model a bit because those were two torpedoes to the bow. Um, so I knew about this mechanic, so I use it on, oh boy, that's a Fletcher. Oh, god damn, god damn it, god damn it, god damn it. 
turrets, turn, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on, I need to kill him quickly, Amorak, where are you, oh, um, I'm too fast, I need to actually lead more, but he's down to 17%, I fire my last remaining torpedo, 15%, 9% crew, come on, aim for the power, aim for the power, I slow down actually, 2%, come on, come on, and now we kill him, good stuff, 6th kill already, 7th kill actually, it's professional times 6, um, and yeah, I'm not really far away from the capture zone, and I'm already, well, right in front of the enemy's patrol boat spawn, in a destroyer, again, talking about balanced maps. So now I switch to the secondaries, and as you can see, the rate of fire is really, really quick, I try to really estimate where the shots are landing, I'm not leading enough, apparently, I should target the machine gun fire to um, not blind me here. Adjust the range, there we go, there are the hits that we want. And this is now a bit of bad marksmanship, it's not the secondary's fault that I'm that bad. But eventually I get the kill. Um, and that is actually then one of the highest scores that I ever had. Now with 8 kills. I tried to reverse and actually if you are in the process of spawn camping and you want to get out, this is a problem in ships because they are so clumsy, the range is so short. I know that the ranges need to be short at low battle rating for even ships with really low speed or patrol vessels like the uh, SF-40 Leichte to be able to reach the target zone within a match's time. but when you already are in the battle rating where there are destroyers around, you should extend the um, ships. And you miss here on this um, G5 boat, I guess. And they prepare my secondary gunners already. Um, they're a higher rate of fire, they have a touch faster turret rotation speed. And with the armor piercing shots, you just deal more damage, so you have a significantly better DPM. And it's just so much uh, more um, likely that you actually hit the target. Let's see how it works out. First hit already hits him hard. Adjusting the range, aiming for the rear. Now we have to aim for the bridge of this reserve boat to actually kill it. <laughs> so much for the, well, advanced Gaijin damage models. This guy is already sinking, so he was killed previously. And that's actually the end of the match. So that was my review here on the PR7U, Russian Premium Destroyer, the least competitive one I'd say, and to have a good kill count you cannot engage enemy destroyers, you must harvest the patrol boats. I'm not a fan of this, but this is how I got another 9 kill uh, match with the Survivor Award. Let's have a quick look at this result and let's see if we have kind of the same income. And this is something that I also noticed, the income is not the greatest with 36,000 silver lines and 3,218 vehicle research points. So finally, that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Give this video a like if you did. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this review type. And we'll see each other on the waves of War Thunder.